So if you want a vaguely tidy layout inside your case, there's really no easy way about it. Um, you have to pre-fit the cable. Uh, and depending on how complex the route is for the cable, you may have to fit it two or three times uh, in order to get it uh, properly to the correct length. So what I've done here, uh, this is the cable I'm fitting at the minute. It runs around here and it's one of the um, stepper uh, signal cables. So it, it's just at 5 volts, which means it definitely needs um, to be sheathed and it needs to be earthed. So I've already stripped back the bob end of it. Uh, I've got a 2 to 1 connection here to the PC plus 5 volts, because um, both, both pulse and uh, direction uh, positive uh, are at 5 volts. And that's a fairly standard setup. I, I, Thing. So it's definitely used by these uh, lead shine. I think it's used by Gecko as well. Um, and then you've got the other two cables uh, for the opposite half of, of the circuit. And then this that cable then runs up there, and I'm going to feed it across the top of here, uh, so it will be zip tied down onto there, and then snuck up this corner and snuck up this corner and basically you've you've got to just try and hold it in place uh, everywhere it's going to be and then get it lined up as best you can there and then make a mark like that on the cable uh, to show you where to cut it back to. I've already trimmed it to length, it used to be a little bit longer um, as always you want a little bit of extra cable not a little bit too little um, so this is probably going to be a little bit on the long side still uh, but uh, what I'll do is um, take the outer sheath off, uh, trim, back the, um, trim back the shield and then test fit the cables and see how much cable I actually need to get down into this connector. Um, so there you go. Oh yeah I've also checked this relay. Um, this neutral cable is correct. Uh, basically you feed live into here and that just acts as a switch and if there's an error it just closes the switch so that just acts as the neutral for that and I've started fitting some of the covers for some of the cable trays. Just uh, just wanted to test fit a couple just to see um, that one and just down there just to see how they worked see what sort of finish it would give um, I won't I won't fit the rest just yet because uh, there's still a few cables to go in there. Uh, in in particular, there's um, a breakout board that fits in here uh, to provide speed control for the spindle. I, I don't know how well uh, this filming angle will work, but <coughs> we'll give it a go. Um, I've tidied up this end of the cable. Uh, bit of heat shrink on it, I've got a connector now on the earth and I've trimmed this end of the cable roughly. Uh, now I'm just going to test fit it so that I can trim the, uh, the drive end to final, final length. So it really helps if you can fit at least one of the connectors in before you start because it anchors the cable in, in the exact place it's, it's going to, to be when it's finally fitted. So uh, I'm having a bit of a problem with it continually slipping uh, out of across the back here which is making the cable shorter than it needs to be. So I'm just going to slip a couple of screwdrivers in which will pin the cable into place across the back so uh, hopefully it will stop slipping quite so much because <coughs> there's a danger you'll cut the cable too short. Uh, 
and I think, unfortunately after all this, I need to cut about another inch of sheath off, um, or outer sheath off. Okay, so uh, a second go at fitting this cable. I've cut about an inch off the outer sheath and, um, and the shielding. So I'll feed that back in. Just put the screwdriver back in just to pin it in place while I work. Okay, I've obviously got it in quite a bit tighter than I did before because that's that's right right at the upper limit. This is the danger of, of running cables like this is it's really hard to make sure they, they fall in exactly the same place every time. Um, <coughs> what I was looking for was to have this outer sheath maybe sticking sticking over this um, connector point by maybe 15 mil that sort of, that sort of distance um, at the minute yeah it does it does uh, run over it a little but it's not as much as I'd have liked um, but it will do now what I want from these cables is to run them so they loop down and in like that if you can see that just uh, so there's a bend and then they go in vertically. And the reason you do that is to just relieve, relieve strain on the cable. Um, you don't want to try and have a very sharp kink in the cable because you, you're stressing the conductors. Um, unfortunately, at the bob end, uh, because, it, because it's so tight, I, I do actually have a, a sharper radius than I'd like. I think it'll be okay because the bootlace ferrule um, basically takes up some of the bend so it's not quite as sharp as it, as it could be and, and these, are, these are quite flexible cables so as I say I think it'll be alright but um, uh, ideally you want something like that so you have a nice even curve you, you want the um, <coughs> diameter of the curve to be hmm, probably three or four times minimum the diameter of the uh, cable uh, now I'm going to have to just quickly look at the circuit diagram because each cable here will have to be cut exactly to length because the, the, it's the, the first four connection points but they are, well, what are they, they may be 15mm long so as each cable goes in it will have to be cut to be slightly longer than the next one. So we'll have, um, the first one is Pulse Plus which is going to be grey and then pulse minus um, uh, is, according to the diagram, um, is black. Down. I've just dropped a wire down into my cable tray. So, uh, you can't have wires rattling around in your case. There you go. So you should find now that the grey, the black wire is slightly longer than the grey. Now if you're feeling brave, you can just cut the next wire the same the same amount longer. In fact, I think that's what I'll probably do. Um, so the next wire is pulse uh, is direction plus. So we'll have that as brown, and then direction minus as blue. So I'll just I'll just cut those um, as they are. Fit some boot laces. So when you're stripping for boot laces, don't do it over the case because there's always a chance that you're going to uh, break a couple of strands. You, sh you should 
try and avoid breaking strands but it does happen occasionally and the last thing you want is for a strand to fall down into the case. Um, if you're lucky you'll get duff signals, if you're unlucky it's going to short something. You know, easy lose a 50 quid drive was short on a single piece. On a single little broken strand. I have heard of it happening. So we were going grey, black, weren't we? The problem with taking it out is you, you'll wire it straight and then you put quite a lot of strain on, on the plug as you plug it back in and you have to bend all four wires at the same time to the correct shape. Uh, if you're wondering, the other, the other two holes are for direction, uh, sorry, for enable um, and you don't typically use enable. It is possible you can connect it to the relay on the bob if, if uh, this bob has a relay that you could use um, if you don't. It, it's really not necessary though, it's, it's a safety feature but um, there's enough safety features in this already I think. Yeah so there we go, four neat wires, the grey wire is mm, I would say maybe a tiny bit on the short side, um, awkward wiring though so well, I think that's acceptable. Um, no strain, it's a good route for the cable, yeah pretty pleased, uh, just got the other three to do now, I'll pull it down and give you a closer look. There you can see that bend is a little bit sharp down there, but it's it's only a quarter bend. It was an early start this morning, um, about uh, 3 a.m. 3 early actually, uh, but uh, it's allowed me to get in all of the control wires. Um, <coughs> so there we go, all wired into the bob, just here running up across the back of the case and down into the drives. So I think that's a pretty neat job. It would have been nice if I could have got it in the trunk in, but that's uh, that's worked out pretty well. Not many cables to go now. Um, driver alarm cables, um, the cables for the BFD, and the ones for the speed controller and I think that's about it I can't think of anything else that I need to put in there which is lucky because there's really not much space left in that case anymore